finding my notes. Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about the top five different types of stance fitments out there. Um, I've seen a video put out from a different channel that I felt like did not encompass stance fitment whatsoever. It just seemed to cover very general fitment and it wasn't very specific. It left too many open holes for me. So I'm going to revisit it now and I'm going to talk about the top five different types of stance. Before I get too into it, we are trying to hit 10k, so if you guys don't mind dropping a sub down below, it doesn't cost you anything, and it would really help us out. The first one, we were all here at some point, the, the stanced, flush, lowered kind of look. This is where I think almost anyone starts. Uh, a couple examples of this is my old setup, Merlo Miata's old setup. Usually coilovers or springs is how you get the fitment. Uh, there's like an inch or two away from the rim, so it's not like fully slammed, but it's usually tucking a little bit of tire. Little to no camber, maybe negative three degrees natural camber from lowering it or something like that, but generally not like crazy camber or anything like that. And it'll usually have like a little subtle poke if you run stretch, or it'll just be flush with the fender if you don't run very much stretch. Uh, that's like the fitment everyone's seen before, everyone's done before. That's probably the most popular fitment. Uh, the second thing I'm going to talk about is bagged cars. Bagged cars, I think, have two different subgenres as well as static cars that there's bagged with rim fitment or poke fitment and bagged with tuck fitment. Um, the first I'm going to mention is tucked fitment. This is like when someone buys wheels that are a little bit bigger to kind of fill out the, the fender arches of a car, but when you fully air out in the frame of the car sitting on the ground, you need to tuck the wheels a little bit to make them fit correctly. Um, I've heard some people say this is just someone that didn't buy their wheels correctly or got the wrong sizes. I completely disagree with this. This is usually guys that uh, bag their cars but don't really have intention of doing stance and they'll have like a really big tire on the back or something like that and they can't manage to get it to poke. Um, it's not that you bought the wrong things or anything like that at all, it's just some people prefer it and that's it. This next one is probably the second most popular in the whole stance community and that's people with bags that are having rim fitment or poke fitment. That'll be like a, a little bit of stretch, like maybe a 215 on a 10 and a half or a 240 on a 10 and a half or something like that. And uh, it'll sit directly on the fender when it airs out, like the rim will sit directly on the fender when it airs out. There's a lot of guys doing this right now, it's very popular, it looks really good really hard to hate and then they just air up and drive normally basically not much more to it Again. This couldn't happen again. This is that one in a lifetime. Um, now I'm gonna step on to talking about static this fitments static is a very subjective word but what I mean when I say static by definition, it means something that has lack of moving or something like that. This is usually referring to people's spring rates or their suspension in general. Uh, cars usually will come with like 6K springs, whereas if you're static, you'll usually upgrade them to like at least 20K. Um, some guys go 50K to 100K. Uh, it, it just means that the car doesn't really move anymore and it's really low. It looks bagged, but it's not bagged. It's on coilovers. So the first subgenre of being static is the same as bagged, it's tuck fitment and this is usually people that can't afford um, super high spring rates for their cars or whatever or just don't want to run that kind of fitment, they don't want to run that kind of stretch to have that danger, I don't know. This is, this is me basically, I can't afford nice 100k springs or full stiff suspension so I'm on smaller spring rates and I just tuck the wheels. When they're tucked, instead of it smashing the fender like that, it just wing. It goes like that on a bump. So, 
it makes a lot more sense for me personally on Raceland still. Uh, but there's all sorts of fitments out there that people will do um, to make the tuck look good. So then there's static with rim fitment. Um, for, for the sake of not getting things confused, I'm going to keep this specific to cars that do not have much camber at all, maybe anywhere from like zero to five degrees of camber. That's what I consider static with rim fitment on just plain out static rim. You, the, for this, you have to have super high spring rates. Usually people will go 100K or stiffer for this, like fully, no springs, just block suspension. Uh, it's really hard to achieve without baking up your fenders. You really have to have correct suspension for it and you have to get your struts revalved and stuff like that. It's very hard to achieve. It's really impressive when you see it, especially moving and driving down the road at that same height. It's pretty crazy. Um, I think a lot of people have set their goals for that and I definitely will eventually do something like that But for now, I'm happy with what I got So basically yeah when the when the fender is sitting on the lip with not too much stretch or camber That would just be called static with rim fitment uh, the next category is kind of like I, I've already mentioned basically all the stance categories I can think of as far as ways you can set up your fitment, but um, a next category would be cambered out cars or whatever Cambered out, I'd consider to be anything like negative 10 degrees or lower than that, like negative 20. And uh, you can be static, you can be bagged, it really does not matter. You can't be too specific when I'm just saying a cambered out car. So it's different when you say a static cambered out car versus a bagged cambered out car, of course. But generally, there is a lot of cambered out cars in the scene, mine included. And uh, it's really cool to see it. I think they're really neat looking in person. You don't see much like them ever. I get a lot of comments from people that don't even know cars that are just like, what's wrong with your wheels? Ha <laughs> ha. But I mean, it gets a lot of attention. I guess that's the whole attraction to it. Last thing is Sudani fitment. This is people that stretch their tires way beyond spec. I got a lot of hate comments on my Nanking video saying, Oh, Kellen, you stretch the tires way too much. That looks stupid. I hate it. This is why the tires defeated. This is like that times 25. It is like running a 175 on like a 13. It's ridiculous. It looks insane. Um, you're only supposed to have Sudani on the outer barrel and it has to be a flat lip barrel and stuff like that. It is very specific how to get this fitment and, and whatnot, but it's sketchy. I don't even think the tire fully seats on there. I think you just fill it up with air enough and then the tire kind of creates its own outer bead. It's really sketchy. I'm not a huge fan of it personally myself, but it is getting very popular nowadays so I can't ignore it um, and I think it does look cool when it's done right just like anything else 
I think if you spend time and effort on something and really care about it, then it's going to come out really cool and you're going to be proud of the end result no matter what. And if you're proud of it, then who cares what anyone else thinks? That's really it. If I miss some, please let me know. I tried to brainstorm about this for a while and there's so many things underneath the stance umbrella that it's hard for me to really capture every single last fitment and style. Um, but for the most part, I tried to do everything. If I'm forgetting something, let me know down below. We will see you guys in the next one where we will be shaving a pickle. Peace. Figured I'd throw a little cat, cat action here in the end. She just hangs out all the time.